Hey, hello, and welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. I'm out taking my uh, morning walk, and I'm here by the lake, and I decided to do the intro. I've been walking already and recording, so I'm um, just going to have a little chit-chat with you, let you know what's been going on in my life, what I've been doing with my Spanish, and uh, took a little trip, and I was gone for about five days from the house and uh, tell you a story about my one of my relatives. But before I do that, you know, there's three things you can do for me. Hey, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too, just like you. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Well, hello, YouTubers. Uh, I'm out here for my uh, daily walk. It's about 9.30 in the morning. I came out kind of early because it's starting to get hotter to, uh, right now because you're getting into summer and um, it's a little bit cool right now, but it gets hot pretty quick or it gets hot pretty quickly. I've been walking for about an hour uh, when I go walking and I go back and I uh, lift some weights, do some uh, exercise. So uh, it's become my routine. And I do this about uh, four to five times a week. See, I got my uh, Bluetooth uh, earphones on. I usually, when I go walk, I like to listen to a Spanish podcast or two because I have an hour to kill. We say in English, an hour to kill. That means I have an hour to use. And then why not use it productively? So I find it's good. I can listen to a couple podcasts, you know, 20 minutes each, or maybe a podcast that's 40 minutes and another one that's 15 minutes. So again, if you guys are having uh, trouble finding time to study English, hey, do you exercise? Do you go to the gym? Do you work out? You know, listen to podcasts. I think that's a great way to, uh, to practice your English. Uh, give you a little update on what's been going on with me. I was taking a uh, online Spanish course through a university in uh, Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. Y la universidad, the university is uh, UNAM, and um, I'm taking a level five course. I think there's uh, eight eight levels, so I uh, was taking the course and. We would meet every uh, Tuesday and Thursday for two and a half hours from about, uh, let me switch hands here. We would meet from uh, 11, 11 to one thirty my time. And it was really fun, had a good teacher, focused a lot on uh, the main area of uh, focus, I would say, is the uh, subjunctive the past subjunctive in uh, Spanish, something that's kind of difficult to uh, to grasp or difficult to master. I think it just takes a lot of time. So I can thankfully say I have a much better handle on the subjunctive. I have a much better handle on the subjunctive, which means I understand it much better, understand it much better. I can ask you, hey, uh, do you have a good handle on uh, English prepositions. That means, do you understand English prepositions uh, pretty well or fairly well? And uh, we had our final exam, which was interesting. And it's a, it was a two-part exam one day. It was a oral exam, oral verbal speaking. And uh, this, the second part of the exam was on another day which I think was like a four-part um, online exam. And we had two hours to do the uh, final exam, and I took about an hour and a half. And happy to say I got my uh, grades, uh, my, my grade, I got my grade back. 
and I made an uh, A minus, so I was happy with that. I think I got a 96 uh, out of 100. So uh, sadly to say, I guess I could say they don't offer uh, courses that I could take or that I would want to take in the summer. I think they do offer a course in the summer, but it's like Monday through Friday, five days a week for two and a half hours a day and you know I have a conflict on Wednesdays because I volunteer to deliver meals to uh, elderly people on Wednesday so I couldn't uh, attend the class on Wednesday and another issue or another problem is uh, walking up on the lake I'll put the lake behind me so you can kind of see Another problem, I don't really want to uh, spend five days a week for two and a half hours a day because sometimes things come up or there's things I need to do or we need to go somewhere. So it's a little bit inconvenient. So I won't be able to take uh, a class for, um, through UNAM during the summer. So once the fall arrives in, I think, August, I'll be able to take the uh, next level class, which would be level six. So I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, or kind of like while I'm waiting for that, I was listening to a podcast called Handy Spanish. And the uh, lady who uh, runs the podcast or creates the podcast said she has like a uh, Club de Español, Spanish club. And uh, you can sign up for that for a monthly fee. And uh, once a week, you have a uh, conversation practice based on uh, topics. So you have like homework, un tarea, hoja de tarea, uh, like a homework page or sheet or assignment. You need to study that about different topics. And uh, then you talk about that topic with another classmate, with the teacher there. Kind of guiding the session and so it seems like it's very interesting the uh this uh site is uh seems to be uh for advanced spanish speakers or high intermediates which is good for me and uh seems like it's perfect for my level everything on the web page is in spanish so todo en espanol everything so it's real good practice for me and what I've uh, found out, um, and once a week there's a grammar uh, online class. A lot, a lot of the uh, students are very advanced, or my level or even higher, because uh, it seems like quite a few of them live in Spain or are living in Spain, have lived in Spain for like uh, four, five, six years, or lived in uh, Spanish-speaking countries, or they have been studying Spanish for 10, 20 years, so... Um, I can say it's a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit intimidating, but uh, it's good practice for me because I think it's important to uh, push yourself. You have to push yourself, uh, you know, get into situations where you may not be that, that comfortable in. So it'll pull you up. It'll pull you up to a higher level. So I'm looking forward to that. I just signed up for this course and I'll do that for the summer. I wanted to do something because, like I say, this other course through the uh, University in Mexico, I, I won't be able to attend any courses. And I like that structure. I like that structure. So what else is going on with me? Um, my wife went to El Paso, Texas to kind of spend three weeks with her mom. Her mom has some health uh, issues or we could say health challenges. And she has kind of problems with her heart she has two uh, bad valves of her heart. So she needs a, a type of procedure, maybe not, we could say not surgery. It's a form of surgery, but it's not like open heart surgery. But there's a procedure that the doctor can do to help fix one of the valves, which should make her life uh, a lot better because she gets tired uh, sometimes easily. She's on uh, oxygen 24 seven which means 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So my wife was there to take her mom to several uh, doctor's appointments and uh, to have several tests done because at the end of June, she's going to have another uh, procedure to help fix her uh, valve, a valve in her heart. 
So uh, while she was there for three weeks, I decided to fly down there and visit her for five days. And it was a good time. So the time flew by. The time flew by. The time went by very quickly. And um, it's only about an hour and a half, hour, one hour and 45 minute flight from Houston, the closest airport to where I live, to El Paso. And uh, yeah, spent a good time. And uh, it's interesting there in El Paso because it's located in the desert. And most of the homes don't actually have grass. Their yards don't have grass. It's mainly uh, rock or stone for the yard. So it's kind of uh, a big change from what's here where everybody has uh, grass in their yards. But I like it out there. I like the mountains and the desert environment and uh, kind of just uh, hung out at my mother-in-law's place. Also, um, we went to visit a friend of my brother-in-law's. My wife's brother has a good friend who lives kind of out east of El Paso a little bit, 20 minutes, and he pretty much lives kind of in the desert, which was very interesting. Just a lot of sand and we say brush, shrubs, and uh, he has a horse and a corral, and it was very interesting, very nice time. We spent about three, four hours there. He uh, cooked some food actually fried some chicken and some potatoes. Sadly, I couldn't eat that due to my uh, diet, limited diet, but uh, we talked and really had a good time, so I really enjoyed it. Then I came back and uh, back here. So I'm kind of back to the, back in the saddle again, we say in English, I'm back in the saddle again. That means I'm back to my kind of routine uh, life here and the things that I do and get back to uh, kind of some normalcy or life to get back to normal. But I wanted to, to, on this walk here, to also tell you, let me keep walking, kind of a story uh, that's happening in my life and it involves my uncle. And he's my mom's uh, brother. He's, I think, the second youngest child of 10. And... Uh, he uh, lives here in Houston. He lives by himself. Hey, let me show you uh, something here though first. There's a turtle in the middle of the road. So I was walking down this, the road. I came across something. I saw something here and there's a turtle just uh, in the road. I don't want to get too close. I don't know if he's like a uh, snapping turtle, but you can see he has a shell, the turtle has a shell that's hard on the back, but it's smooth, see that? And uh, kind of feel sorry for it because I don't want it to get run over by a car. Uh, I might see if I can uh, use a stick or something and push it back over close to or into the lake. So, because uh, I don't want him to get squashed, we say, or run over by a car or truck. So let me see if I can do that as I do have a stick with me when I walk. So let me see if I can, uh, let's see what he's gonna do if I, oops, he went in his shell. So I'm gonna try to push him. Oh, he's heavy. There he moves. He can move pretty fast, look at that. I didn't know turtles could move that fast. Let's see, he's gonna go into the water. You see that? All right. Well, I guess uh, I did my good deed for the day. My good deed for the day. Maybe might have saved that turtle's life because the uh, car would have come and uh, crushed him or squashed him uh, on the road. So glad I saw that and helped the fella out. Helped the little fella out. But I was telling you, I have an uncle that lives in Houston. He's uh, 82 years old. He's never been married, he doesn't have any kids, and he lives by himself in an apartment in Houston. He does have a, a girlfriend, or we say he has a friend, and they're pretty close. They've known each other for probably 15, 20 years, and uh, she comes visits him uh, quite often, several times a week. They talk all the time. But he's actually the last um, 
living aunt or uncle on my mother's side of the family that is still alive. So we try to kind of, my brother and I, we try to uh, help him out. We watch out for him. And so one day, uh, Linda, which is his friend or girlfriend, called my brother because I don't live in Houston, but my brother does, and said she had talked to my Uncle John earlier that day. He seemed to be doing fine. He said he had a little bit of a stomach problems like diarrhea, but he was doing okay. But then she tried to call him like five hours later and uh, she couldn't reach him. He didn't answer his phone. So she called my brother and they went over there. They tried to go into his apartment, but the, uh, the lock was uh, on the door. So they couldn't get in. So what they did, they called the fire department. The fire department came and they had to break in to his apartment. They had to uh, kind of break down the door to get in. And my uncle, they found him uh, lying on the bed and he had a lot of uh, like uh, mucus or phlegm um, fluid that was coming out of his mouth and he wasn't very uh, responsive. He wasn't very coherent, coherent, like his mind wasn't clear. And uh, so they put him in the ambulance and they took him to uh, uh, the hospital. And uh, that was almost uh, be three weeks ago tomorrow He'll be in the hospital for three weeks uh, as of as of tomorrow or by tomorrow, so which is a long time. So we can say, come to find out, come to find out, or we learned that uh, he had pneumonia, pneumonia in both lungs, in both lungs. And especially when you're older, older person getting pneumonia, is uh can be a very serious issue and the doctor said uh yeah you can get pneumonia and get very sick very quickly which seems to be what happened to him so i've been down there to see him probably uh i think three times or so in the last uh almost three weeks let me uh get the uh lake behind me here so you can see that well, it's a little bit uh, bright and uh, but he's still in there and he's on IV intravenous antibiotics for the pneumonia. Uh, he had problems with his oxygen levels because of the pneumonia in his lungs, but that's cleared up now. I think that's okay. He had some other issues, but uh, the problem right now is that he cannot swallow or he cannot drink fluids, water, and he cannot eat by mouth because he can't swallow. And they're not really sure why his swallow reflex is not working. So uh, they had a tube down his throat, feeding him with a tube into his stomach, but they could only keep that in maybe two weeks. So about a week ago, or actually this past uh, Sunday, they put a uh, tube into his stomach directly so that they could feed him through the tube. And we're hoping that he can uh, get better, regain his strength, and uh, start to swallow and drink and eat on his own because being fed by a tube into your stomach, uh, you're still weak. You don't have the strength as if you were able to eat normal, regular food. So we're praying for him every day that he will uh, improve but it's been a slow process and he was trying to get physical therapy every day. But the physical therapist said that uh, he's not really, uh, he can't really uh, do the physical therapy exercises right now because he's kind of not strong enough and he still has trouble following commands or directions. So the thing right now is the hospital we think is going to release him in the next several days and uh, they want to send him to a what we call here in the United States a skilled nursing facility where they will um, you know treat his IV antibiotics and mainly uh, offer physical therapy to help him get stronger so that's kind of what we're trying to do at the moment waiting for the hospital 
So I had to uh, talk to somebody at the hospital and uh, pick three facilities that the hospital could send him to for uh, skilled nursing. But the, and he, my uncle has uh, insurance through the federal government since he's an elderly person, which is called Medicare. So if you go to a skilled nursing facility, Medicare covers uh, your time there for the first 20 days. And after 20 days, the 21st day, then the uh, person or the patient has to uh, pay on average, on average, say $175 per day. So that's a lot of money. He doesn't have that kind of money. He just gets Social Security once a month and a small retirement from the job he used to have. But uh, he can't really afford to pay $175 a day. So we're hoping that he can improve uh, pretty quickly within those 20 days. And we'll see what we need to do with him. But the thing is, I don't think he can actually be able to live by himself anymore like he was in his apartment. So that's another issue or I would say a problem that we have to deal with. And um, so you may have to stay at a uh, nursing home facility, we call it, where he can, excuse me, he can receive uh, some type of uh, care, people that will help care for him. And... Um, that those types of facilities are not covered under Medicare, the government insurance. And so that's a big problem here in the United States because people that need that type of care, especially, like I said, you don't have any children or family young that can kind of take care of you. Uh, what do you do? Because a nursing home facility costs around, say, $7,000 a month, 7000 not 700 7000 dollars a month so there is a special program under another program called medicaid that we can apply for and uh hopefully if he needs to go to a nursing home we need to start that process now because it takes two to three months to get approved so basically we ask the government hey um, he has this income that he gets every month uh, he would have to pay everything that he gets every month to the nursing home then if the, he's approved by Medicaid, the government will pay the difference. And then, but he ends up, uh, you end up spending all your resources, all your money. And when you die, you have nothing left because everything went for your care. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, we're kind of dealing with that, me and my brother. So, you know, he's our uncle, he's family. So it's something that we feel, you know, we we need to do, we must do, we have to do. He's, he was been good to us. And um, we say it's the least we can do. It's the least we can do to try to help him because uh, he needs our help right now. So uh, if you're a praying person, pray for my uncle John that uh, he will get better, his health will improve and, and uh, things like that. And the last thing I guess I'll leave you with uh, right now is, uh, for the Memorial Day weekend, which we just had, I went and uh, hung out with. I went and hung out with. That means I went and spent some time with my brother for one day. And like I said, we like to play music. He plays the uh, ukulele and kind of a electric tenor guitar. And I brought my bass guitar and we played some tunes, some tunes or some songs. So maybe I'll put a clip of uh, one of the songs that we played or leave the link. And it's a very famous and popular uh, reggae tune by the famous Bob Marley called I Shot the Sheriff. So uh, I'll mm, cut in a little bit of that so you can uh, see what uh, it sounds like. I think it, it came out pretty good. So my brother, he's maybe fairly close to hopefully being able to retire in the next couple months. So once he retires, we'll be able to hang out together or get together and play some more music together, which would be cool. Because I live up here in in Huntsville. And you know, as you get older, it's kind of more and more difficult to actually uh, meet people or have close friends. I do have some close friends, but they all either live in Houston or another one lives in Los Angeles. So 
is kind of tough. I haven't really been able to meet or make a close friend here where I live. So uh, I do spend time with my brother and, and some other people. But let me let you listen to this song called uh, I Shot the Sheriff. think I'll end the video. So thanks for watching this episode of Learn Everyday English. You know, there's three things you can do for me. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too. Hey, just like you. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye.